Okay, folks, this is going to be blitzing TCP IP for digital technology. Please note that you can actually use this for computer science in year 13 as well. Okay, so let's begin. State three functions of TCP in the TCP IP. So we're just focusing on TCP. Well, number one, it allows one application. So let's imagine that I'm on um, my email to communicate with another application, let's say a web server, and exchange data. So it allows one app, one app, to exchange data with another, to exchange data with another. Okay, I forgot to mention, please pause the video and give it a go first. My bad. Same with each one of these questions we're gonna go through. So I've already given you the first answer unless you've already paused it. So one, <coughs> allows applications to exchange data. Number two, <coughs> so this is one device. This is another device. It allows for or it establishes communication. So it establishes communication until the data exchange is complete. So it establishes communication until data exchange is complete. Let's have a look at the next one. So it decides on how a packet, or should we say how the application. So for example, if we're using email, that would be an application, is turned into a packet. So the TCP decides that. At TCP it adds packet sequence number. To packet header. So we've got allows one app to um, exchange data with another. We've got establishes and maintains communication until the end of data being sent. It determines how this app breaks down data into packets. And we've got that it adds to the header the packet sequence number. What else? Well, it manages the flow going this way of the packets being sent to avoid traffic congestion, kind of like a router. So it manages the flow of a packet. But what else? Well, it detects to see if all the packets have been arrived. So we've got packet number one, we've got packet number two, but where is packet number three? We know it should be coming. And when it does arrive, it acknowledges it. So it acknowledges packets have all arrived and it checks to see if all the packets have arrived. If a packet is missing, so packet number three did not arrive, when it detects that a packet hasn't arrived, it will be responsible for getting the packet to be sent again, retransmission of packets. And finally, when the packets arrive at the destination, it puts the packets, so let's say three arrives first, and then two arrives, and then one, let's imagine one arrived in the middle, it'll put these packets into order. So TCP will do that. So a quick run through. 
It allows applications to exchange data. It establishes and maintains a connection between one application and another. Whoa. Mm. Until um, communication, well, with all the data is sent. It determines how the data is split into packets. It puts um, the packet sequence number onto it. It uh, manages the flow of the packets. It acknowledges all the packets have arrived. It detects if a packet has not arrived. It handles packets to be resent if they've been dropped as if they haven't arrived. And it reassembles the packets into the correct order. And that would be the three functions of TCP. State two functions of IP. Well, IP is all about, this is a packet in a network. So let's imagine that we've got this big computer network. This is a computer. This is a computer. This is a computer. This is a cable. This is a cable. So what it will do, hello, why is this not going to this? Is it'll basically route this packet around the network to the correct destination. So let's go right, let's go down, let's go up. So it routes the packet around the network. It adds onto this packet the source and destination IP address into the header of the packet. And what it'll do is it'll make sure that the data is passed from the internet layer to the network layer. So we've got a packet, it's been made here. It'll then, in TCP IP, pass it down to the network layer. So, IP, it moves the packet around the network, it makes sure it goes to the correct destination, it adds the IP address of the source and destination, and it'll make sure it'll pass the data packet from the internet layer to the network layer. Okay, let's move on. Let's just go for raise, 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 blah, 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 blah. So that is the first two questions done. So the next question is identify one other common protocol that could be used to transfer files across a college. So if I've got building A, so building A, B for building, and we've got building B in this huge network, and we want to send data from A to B, what protocols could we use? Well, we could use SMTP because we could be sending an email. We could use POP3 to retrieve that email. So it's no good sending it, we need to be able to retrieve it as well. We could be using FTP. So if you remember FTP, it is the job like, this is my laptop. This is my web server. My web server can be in building B, my laptop could be in A, and I could be sending it files using FTP software to put onto my website. So again, that's transferring files. We could also be using, to send files, HTTPS, because I could be in building A, on my computer, a website or a server, shall I say, could be in building B, and I can send a request saying, hey, send me a web page. 
the server will send me a web page using HTTP or HTTPS. Remember, HTTP is for anything to do with web browsers. Keep that in mind. But that's still transferring files. If we were using like, if a web server was on this college campus and if a website was gonna send me some photos, I could make a request, it will send it me and I'll be using HTTP because I could be doing it in Google Chrome. Okay. Let's have a look at my next question. Again, pause the video, give it a go first, like you should be doing. So we're doing this one now. Protocols are essential for um, successful transmission over a network. The TCP IP protocol op and suite operates on many different layers. Give an appropriate protocol for each layer. Easy. Application. So you've got your HTTP slash S. You've got your POP3, you've got your SMTP, you've got your FTP. Transport layer, you can talk about TCP, but what else could we talk about? UDP. Cool beans. Okay, and internet. IP. Nice and easy. Let's move down. So the TCP IP uses packet switching. We know that. So I see TCP IP, it's used to send an email. Email, hmm. It's a message, that message will have to be put into packets, so that is called packet switching, where we put it into many different packets. For one node, a node is a computer. So if we ever hear a node, it is a computer or phone, it's a device. To a different node on a different LAN. State the steps of taking what take place for this email to be sent. Well, if we've got an email on the application layer, so on the application layer, it'll pass it down. to the transport layer. It'll be using <coughs> to send the email. I'm gonna put SMTP as a my protocol. At the transport layer, it will split data into packets. Now, if you remember previously, we had a question about the TCP aspect of TCP IP. Now, the transport layer is responsible for actually doing the TCP aspects, which is what we looked at earlier. So if I go right back down, So it splits data into packets, <coughs> adds the MAC address, onto packets. Okay, in the header. And this is important, the header. So the packet is given a header. It'll then go down to the internet layer. At the internet layer, what gets added is an IP address, source and destination, just going to do S and D, and a sequence number, which is also added actually, I apologize, to the header, but this is really messy. So the header, you've got the IP sequence, sorry, source and destination, and the packet sequence number, which are added to the head. The header of a packet. Now the packets are then sent, so this is one, this, this is a computer, this is another computer, 
in a local area network over here, but we're sending it to a different local area network. So you want to send it from there to there. So the packets are forwarded from one LAN to another. Now, as we know with packet switching, they can take different routes. So we're going to put packets take different routes at the other end missing packets are detected as part of TCP and then new ones are requested to be sent. So request for retransmission. This is going off my screen. Retransmission. And then the packets, when they arrive, will arrive out of order and they'll be reassembled into the correct order. So, <clears throat> to go through this again, the message is split into packets. Each packet is given a source, well, a header, and inside this header, you've got the source MAC address and destination MAC address. You've got the um, source IP address and destination IP address. You've got the sequence number. You've got the checksum, all those different things. The packets are then forwarded on from one local area network to another. We may take different routes to get there. That's the same with all packet switching. Missing packets have been sent again. TCP, remember, identifies that and the packets are reassembled in the correct order, which again, TCP handles. One thing I didn't mention is that the packets are a fixed size. Each packet is given a fixed size. So you can be this big, you be this big, you be this big. Okay, let's move down. Pause the video, give it a go. We're looking at this question down here. Explain why packet switching is used. Well, that's easy. So if we've got a computer, a computer, a router, a router, and we've got a line, a channel between these two, if there's too much traffic, on this line because other routers are sending it to this line as well. It's gonna create collisions, it's gonna create uh, all sorts of problems. So what packet switching will do is it will make use of best routes by checking the channel, so that's the line capacity and status. So for example, if it knows that this is a really capable channel, it would use it, but it also check the status because if it's got too much traffic on, there's an issue. Or let's imagine that this was a really poor channel and it can only handle a couple of packets at a time, so the bandwidth is really low. It'll choose a different route to go down. So it'll check the status of the line if there's too much traffic or how much capacity it can handle. So it will use and use alternative routes. These routes will be more robust because you could get situations where you've got, as I said, not much um, bandwidth available, so high collisions you could have cables which are really old, so attenuation takes place, etc. So by switching routes, it could take a route which is, this is a different route, it's imagine, uh, more robust. 
it and also by doing this it spreads out the packets which again means it's going to be more robust as packets take different roots but also share roots if capacity allows. So what I'm basically saying here is that you can have another computer sharing a channel here and if it allows it, there's enough capacity, it's gonna be more it's gonna be better than just having one computer with a dedicated line. Because let's imagine we had this situation where we just had one computer connected to another computer across like many, many different like hundreds of miles and they have one line between them. They're not always going to be connected. So let's imagine I have a connection to Netflix, their server, which is a computer. This is me. And I have my own, my own channel for that. I'm not always watching Netflix. So this is a waste of a channel. So again, it's not very efficient. It's not very robust. I've got my own private channel and I start when I stream great it's amazing it's my own dedicated channel but if I'm not using it no one else can whereas packet switching that allows other people to um, use the same channel so again it's more robust so it's robust in terms of switching to alternative routes to make it more secure more robust because there could be too much traffic line problems etc but packets can also share the same route from different sources and destinations as well so that is why packet switching is used handle congestion lots of packets poor lines but sharing lines as well instead of it just being dedicated to one person like that netflix example pause the video Give us an next bit of go. Describe the purpose of a packet header. Okay, so a packet header, this is our packet. We've got three parts. We've got a payload, a trailer, and we've got the header. The header contains, it stores data about the packet such as the IP address, such as the MAC address, such as the port number, so all of these things. Which then helps, so this data is about the packet and it's routing. So the IP address, for example, is used to help it move from one router to another router to get to the final destination. So it checks the header. And when it arrives, the data is also used to ensure the message or, or the packets, i put packets, are put back together again. Reconstructed. I'm going to put reconstructed here. So, the header is data about the packet. This data would be information about its routing, how to get to its destination, but also how the packet gets put back together again, how it gets reconstructed. So really we're talking about TCP and IP again. If you go back to the question right at the beginning, what does TCP do, what does IP do? TCP, remember part of that is for a packet to be reassembled, um, into its correct order and IP is about making sure it reaches its correct destination. That is the purpose of a packet header. That's the information in the packet header. Pause the video, give us a go. This should be quite easy. Three items that could be contained in the header where well, you've got the IP address of the sender and receiver. You've got also the number of packets 
In fact, there's debate about this bit, so I'm going to hold off on that. The protocol being used, is it going to be HTTP, for example? You've also got the ID sequence number of the packet. You've got this... Um, The packet length. You've also got the. I'm going to introduce you to this concept of port very quickly. Port is basically a port number. A port number is what type of application is being used on the computer or phone. So, for example, if I'm using a web browser, so Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Edge, uh, Safari, Firefox, I could get like port 80. So it knows by the port number that I'm using a web browser. If I'm playing an online game, it might be port 120. So when it's sent, it knows that it's going down TCP IP stack. And when it's sent back, it knows it's using port 120. So it's to do with online gaming. So you've got the source port and destination port. You've got the protocol used. You've got the ID sequence number. You've got the packet length. You've got the source and destination IP address. You've also got the version number of IP. So which version of IP is being used? Okay, again, let's move down. We've got a couple more questions to go on this marathon. There's about, yeah, five, six, about six more questions. So, this question is describe the TCP IP protocol suite. Well, if I had to describe it, I'd say it's like a pyramid. And I'll say that it would have different layers to it. So number one, four layers in a stack. Okay, so what I would do now is I would probably give the different layer names. So we've got the application layer, we've got the transport layer, we've got the internet or what I've taught you as the network. And I use these terms interchangeable. Internet layer, network layer, is this one here. And the final one is the link layer. So that would be the second thing I'd do. I would list the layers. And I'll explain what this is all about. It uses, on each layer, protocols. for transmission of data, which would be the TCP, which is transport control protocol, and internet protocol, IP. And that'll be your perfect answer. So what have I described? I described that it uses a four layer model, it's a four layer stack. Okay. And then different layers, application transport, internet slash network, link layer. I then said that each layer uses its own protocols, which is all for the transmission of data. The main two protocols, TCP and IP, stands for transport control protocol and internet protocol. If you go into details about these, that's fine as well. So when I talk about detail, I'm talking about talking about this first question, the differences between TCP and IP. But this question was more about describing it, the TCP IP suite as a collective. The use of TCP protocol suite is, is successful for communication of the internet. How do we describe it? So what we've just done there is describe it. We haven't talked about what TCP does. We haven't talked about what IP does. We describe everything together. Okay, this is a very basic question. What different layers for different protocols? So TCP is on the transport layer. 
IPs on the network or you can say internet layer as SMTP is on the application. Okay, this is a slightly different style question. Give it a go first. Pause the video. Okay, a company is setting up a network. Great. So a company sets up a computer app by adding a server. So they do a computer server. The server's role is to act as an email. Okay, so it's an email server. It allows the technicians to remotely log in, blah, 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 blah. State the names of two application layers. Well, <laughs> this is very easy. We can talk about SMTP, which is used to send emails to the email server. We can talk about pop three, which is to retrieve the emails from the server. Now there is a difference between pop three and SMTP. And that is one to send, one to retrieve the email. Get back into your head. Retrieving the email from the server, sending it to the server. They're both using the server, but different purposes. But we could also argue that if they're using, it hasn't said if they're using something like Outlook, which is an app, or using something like Gmail, or Outlook Express, or I think it's Outlook Express, which is used in a browser. So like my Gmail, I go into my Google Chrome, I type in mail.google.com, it takes me to a website. And if it's that's the case, it would also not just use SMT, not just pop free, but it will also be using HTTPS. So a user can access their email via the World Wide Web. See, I don't need to use the World Wide Web to access my email. I can use an app like Outlook. So if I go to start, I don't think I've got it installed. Outlook, no, I don't. But it'll be an app, I can download it, but I won't be needing a web browser. So I could use HTTPS, SMTP, POP3. The top two answers would be SMTP and POP3. HTTPS, yeah, you can throw it in there as well. You'll be fine. Let's move down. Explain, okay, so pause the video, give this question a go. <clears throat> okay, explain how the transport layer of TCP IP determines which application layer software on the server should deal with the request. Hmm, this is using knowledge I've just taught you. I said to you that every application, let's say like um, Google Chrome, has a port number. So, the transport layer, so I'm going to do T alpha transport layer, uses the port number which is added to the packet header. So the request goes to the correct software. So if I want a web page and a web page comes back to me, so this is Netflix and it knows I'm using Google Chrome, it'll also have my port number 80 on it and it'll go to my Google Chrome. Magic. Move down. Describe one function of the network layer. Well, it adds the IP for the source destination added. It determines where 
to send the data using the destination IP address. It creates a checksum for error detection. So there you go. So it determines where the data is being sent. It adds the IP address of source and destination and it creates a checksum. Any one of those points will get you the mark.